I am dressed by the Galleria. <laughs> I'm a Galleria girl. So 53 years ago, Bill Marriott Sr. wanted a TV magazine for his hotel rooms. So he approached this young publisher printer in Dallas, Texas, Jim Berger, and they created TV host, when, went into all the Marriotts. 53 years later, it morphed into Travel Host, which is now the largest and oldest visitor publication in the country. In 52 markets, over 3 billion people have seen a tra copy of Travel Host over the years. And I own the Greater Fort Lauderdale edition, since 1980, we're about to celebrate our 40th year, folks. That's really amazing, right? And back then, there was no cell phones, there was no fax machines, there was nothing that we rely on now. There was no CDB, there was no Broward Center. Just remember what it was like back then, right? So our mission then, as it is now, is simple. It's to serve the traveler, to be their go-to guide when they come into this destination, to enjoy the best of this destination. So when that visitor gets off the airplane or off that cruise ship or drives in, they check into that hotel room, many of you are in this room right now, put on their bathrobe and pick up a copy of Travel Host because we tell people where to go in a nice way. We tell them where to drop, where to dine, all the great events that are happening, all their major attractions, how to have fun in this destination so they want to come back again and again and again. So really when you think about it, when people come in here, we want them not only to have a great experience, but do, there's so much for them to do that they want to come back here. So we are uh, actually in our current publication, there are hundreds of things for them to do in this destination. We're distributed in 200 hotels, 20,000 hotel rooms every day, 95 condos, all the major marinas, uh, 40 additional locations. and. Our, our magazine's printed every two months, so each bi-monthly issue, because of the in-room publication, is seen by 400,000 people. You wanna get that? Over the year, that's 2.4 million people pick up a copy of this, right? And uh, they use it every day, where am I gonna go? And um, we're also a fully integrated media company. Um, Sabrina's our social media director. And we, our national website, our Fort Lauderdale landing page, had over a million visitors last year. In addition, we have thousands and thousands of social media followers, uh, over 1.6 million media impressions annually. So back then, there was no internet 40 years ago. Now, we're all over it, right? So um, we're currently working on our December, January issue, which is going to stay in the hotel rooms through the Super Bowl, and then we go into the rest of 2020. We also produce, with our CVB, this is our 15th, 15th, 18th annual pocket saver. It's a, like a mini guide. It was, it's really primarily distributed to meeting planners and conventioners when they come into this destination, but also 80 other additional locations, hotel lobbies, condo lobbies. It's printed annually. Um, it's a very widespread publication. People can put their deals in here, okay? so. But my job, our travel host job, is to grow your business. That's what we do, is to grow your business year round. So you all have a copy of Travel Host. Many of you get them in your hotel rooms as well. Enjoy it. There's so many things to do in it. There's 200 things that, you, but no one can be bored in this destination if you have a copy of Travel Host, folks. And this particular issue is our spa issue. There are 40 wellness tips, so take advantage of that. We all need to be well and relax in this day and age. Every day when I wake up, I am deeply grateful that I get to do what I do, to serve our visitors, to serve this community, to work with a great team of people at Travel Host, and also to work with the people in this room that are the hospitality leaders. You make my life thrive. And for those of you that are clients in this room, thank you, thank you, thank you. For those that, that you aren't, talk to my travel host team. So thank you very much. Thank you, Aya. And let me say a personal word. I don't think there is a better ambassador for Fort Lauderdale and Fort Lauderdale Beach than Ina Lee. I'll tell a personal story. When I first arrived in this market in 2009 uh, at the Pelican Grand, the very first person who reached out to me was Ina Lee and said, let me take you, lead you by the hand, 
and introduce you to everyone you need to know. And for that, I will forever, ever be grateful. So thank you, Ina. Thank you for such support, not only the Beach Council, because most people don't, really, don't realize, Ina Lee is the founder of the Beach Council. And Ina Lee has put her stamp on this community like no other person. So thank you very much. Just a, a, a few quick words uh, from the standpoint while we'll be uh, uh, beginning breakfast service here. We'll serve throughout uh, the, the, the morning. Uh, also in addition, I, I do want to mention the fact that um, not only is Ina Lee a very, very proud sponsor this morning and Travel Host Magazine, but so is Gallery One. Uh, as Gallery One is not charging the chamber for any service or breakfast this morning. So this ends up really being our, our, our fundraiser for the uh, for the Beach Council this year, and we're very very proud to uh, to be a part of the Beach Council. And for those who don't know, I also chair the Beach Council, and because of Ina Lee, have been on the Beach Council since 2009. So thank you very much. Uh, I would now like to turn it over to our wonderful CEO, Mr. Dan Lindley. Thank you, Bob. All right. So, Stacey, welcome. I'm so excited to hear what you're going to say today. And Chris, Dave, excited that you guys are here. I know, always. For the first time, well, this is the second time I'll be doing business. The Chamber will be doing business with Ina and her publication. We'll be in all those great venues that Travel Host is during the International Boat Show and uh, Super Bowl. Uh, with the City of Fort Lauderdale's help, uh, we'll have a four-page insert that really is going to talk about vis with visitors. Instead of just visiting here, why don't you have your office here? Why don't you open a second office here? So that's kind of the take on that. And then they can follow up with us and we'll give them more economic information and refer them over to the city and economic development of the Alliance and whatnot. So we can get those businesses here. That's exciting stuff. Next week, I'll be up in Daytona for the Florida Association of Chamber Professionals annual meeting. But the week after that, more importantly, we'll be in Washington, D.C. with 85 delegates. Going to D.C. on issues like Fort Everglades, uh, 23 years trying to get it widened and deepened. We're going up there on Pell Grants to expand the use of Pell Grants for getting people in the field quicker. So shorter term options that right now you have to, uh, Pell Grants only qualify for longer term duration uh, training. This will be for short term duration training. MPO Grants directly from the federal government instead of going to the state, coming directly to our South Florida MSA and a number of other issues, all good stuff. How many, anybody in here going to Washington with us? I am Chris. Melissa's our chair of the Washington Summit. Thank you, Melissa. By the way, I am dressed by Galleria today. <laughs> there you go. Uh, lastly, I want to I want to say that um, you know we had a really uh, a bit of luck, but the Bahamas did not fare so well. So would you join me just in a second? Um, for the Bahamas, but also for Patriots Day yesterday, I think it's important that we reflect a little bit more than just one day. Let's take a moment and still your hearts and think about those who we lost and those families that were affected. Please join me. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be your president and CEO. I look forward to seeing those of you in Washington and uh, I look forward to a wonderful fall lineup. We've got a lot of things happening. It's going to be an extraordinary third and fourth quarter. I'll throw it back to Bob. Is that right? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dan. It uh, gives me a lot of pleasure uh, this morning to put together this, uh, this forum. Uh, there is so much that's happening on Fort Lauderdale Beach. Uh, in fact, I really like to refer to it, I think as, as Ina said, it's a second renaissance of Fort Lauderdale Beach. It's a combination of private, governmental, tourism, all coming together to recreate, once again, 
Fort Lauderdale Beach. One of the, one of the things that I, I, I think we can all take great pride in is that a great destination reinvents itself over and over and over again. It does it through the government and parks and recreation and cityscapes. It does it through tourism of rebranding and letting people know who this destination is and what it's about. And it then combines with private development that creates new wonderful destinations within itself as well as great places to live. And as, and as Dan says, you know, you come here, uh, you know, I guess, I guess it's, it's best said. Uh, you know, come for a visit, stay for a lifetime. And so many people have done this. And so at this point, I'm going to ask our panelists. We are very happy this morning, and I will let Ina Lee introduce each and every panelist, um, which should be a wonderful thing. Thank you, everybody. Well, you've all heard the expression, what stays in Vegas stays in Vegas. In this case, what happens on the beach does not stay on the beach. The economic engine of Fort Lauderdale Beach is thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of not only dollars spent in this county, but also jobs, folks. Um, Stacy, I think the, the overall bed tax collection of the destination is 16, Jane? 60. Six, zero, billion or million? Okay. 40, this is unofficial, 47% of that is generated by this one mile of the beach folks. So it's an amazing fuel. And um, we really very pleased this morning to have the three people with us that are gonna be talking to us. And their bios are very, very large because all they've accomplished. So I'm doing the cliff note version, otherwise we'd be here all morning, okay folks? Um, but we have the three most important engines on the beach here today with us. Stacy Ritter, head of our CEO, CEO of our Convention and Visitors Bureau, Chris Lagerbloom, who is the city manager of Fort Lauderdale, and Deb Matwani, who is one of the major developers on the beach and has been a spearhead for that. So, start. Stacy, who I've learned in a just on a personal note, has become such a good friend. Okay, I have never met anyone more passionate about this destination. In 2016, she was named President and CEO of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. She's responsible for the administration of not only our offices here that have four to five amazing employees, but our offices around the world and around the country. The, she oversees an operating budget of 24 million. She also, they're, they're responsible for all the sales and marketing of this destination for the development of leisure, international sports, group, convention business, and also our multicultural, multicultural diversity programs. And um, before here, some of you may or may not know, she was a county commissioner for many years. As a matter of fact, when she started as the CEO here, she said, I can't believe people actually smile, you know, because coming from government, that's not necessarily what they do every day. But she was a county commissioner a year, um, starting in 2006 until 2016. During that time, she was also the county mayor. And then before that, she was at the state legislature. So she was a, a representative there for many, many years. And when she was there, she was also the head of the Broward County Legislative Delegation, elected by her, um, her, her uh, people that she served with to be in that position. So very long history in government, which is serving us well now. And she was born in Washington, D.C., moved here in 1974. She's almost like a native, okay? She went to law school and graduated from NSU. So she's an attorney as well as everything else she does and multiple other accountabilities and um, organizations that she's part of. Chris Lagerbloom is, um, you know, it, it speaks to who he is that when the city commission went out to find a city manager, they did not even do a national search, folks, okay? Because when he came here as assistant city manager back in um, 2016, he was so exceptional in that position and what he accomplished that they named him city manager, which he's been doing since the first of the year. And he's responsible, obviously, for every aspect of the government of the city of Fort Lauderdale. He reports to um, the city commission and the mayor. And he's also the one that instrumented the Go Big, Go Fast 
infrastructure and sewer project that we're involved in right now. So all of that digging up of streets and everything else, it's his fault. <laughs> um, but it's for the common good going forward. We need to do that. Before he came here, he was from Milton, Georgia, where he was the um, city manager there. And under his reign there, they became the best quality of life in Georgia and one of America's 100 safest cities. So he's also um, holds a Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice. I didn't, you don't need to arrest any of us in this room. And he's um, from Georgia State and a Master of Public Administration from Columbus State University. So Chris, thank you for being here. Particularly when we scheduled this, folks, we didn't know this would end up being a city commission meeting day, right? So they're gonna be meeting starting at 1.30 today all the way through until when it ends tonight, so really appreciate you being here. Deb Matwani, okay, I have a, listen, I've known Deb since he was a teenager on Fort Lauderdale Beach, right? Um, and uh, his mother, Ramal, was one of my dearest, 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 dearest friends. He serves as the president of Mary Mock Ventures, a Fort Lauderdale-based real estate firm that focuses on value-add investment and development opportunities. Um, he, they operate hotels, retail centers, condos, rental apartments, they build them, and they also operate some of them throughout the United States, but a particular <laughs> emphasis on Florida. He's currently involved in over one billion in development projects, including the new Four Seasons um, Hotel and Private Residences, the Gale Hotel, Boutique Hotel and Residences, both on Fort Lauderdale Beach, Broadstone, Oceanside, and Flagler Village. And then uh, Ramola and Deb and the family just announced three days ago, okay? They've created the R. Matwani Family Academy of Hospitality and Tourism Management at Broward College, which is a huge opportunity for this industry because we need well-trained people. So I really want to acknowledge the whole Matwani family and Ramola um, for making that kind of investment in the future of this destination. Okay, so um, obviously we know knowing Stacy's background and why she's here, tourism is the life engine of Fort Lauderdale Beach. So we thought it was important for us to get an update from Stacy about what's going on in the bureau, particularly as it relates to the beach and as we go forward. Okay, so Stacy. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here. I just wish it wasn't so damn early. Um, <laughs> Those of you who know me know I'm not an early morning person. I don't have any clue how this works. Mike, the nature stuff you just Which air? There are two arrows. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's because, as Ina told you, I moved here in 1974, so you know I ain't no spring chicken anymore. Um, technology's new to me. So that's me. Okay, so there's the beach. So as Bob said, uh, we are in an era of evolution here in Fort Lauderdale, and the destination is definitely undergoing an exciting renaissance. It's a great story to tell, um, and it's a great story to tell to promote tourism. So the days of when we were just known as a spring, de a spring break destination are, are long gone. We're now a, cos a cosmopolitan, upscale luxury destination with walkable outdoor mural districts, luxury shopping, rooftop bars, overlooking an incredible and ever-changing skyline, which shows our continued and rapid growth. We've seen interest from visitors in our arts and culture scene, and Fort Lauderdale Beach continues to fuel the excitement. With events such as the Riptide Music Festival at the end of November this year, in its fourth year, which actually has become the Broward County Signature event, and the Tortuga Music Festival, which takes place in April on the beach as well. Um, we heavily promote all of these um, events. Oh, and I should also mention that the first ever Pride of the Americas event will be taking place in April 2020 on Fort Lauderdale Beach as well. There'll be opening ceremonies on the beach, there'll be a parade on the beach, um, and Fort Lauderdale Pride is, hoping, is, is hosting this first ever transformational event on the beach. 
Proud of the Americas 2020, we expect hundreds of thousands of people to descend on Fort Lauderdale Beach next April. It's gonna be an amazing event. And while it is um, spot, hosted by Fort Lauderdale Pride and sponsored by the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention Visitors Bureau, it's really the first event we've ever put on from scratch and we're really, really excited about it. You should be too, especially if you are a hotel because you will be, it, um, it's right after T Tortuga. So you will have a very, very good April 2020. And I'm, we're delighted to be a part of that. There's a, an event called World Pride, which takes place every other year. Uh, New York City had it this year. It's the first time it was ever hosted in the States. And we determined that since our markets are really South America, Latin America, Central America, and North America, those are our biggest international markets, Canada being an international part of North America. Let's do a Pride of the Americas and showcase our LGBT plus community and the diversity and inclusiveness for which we are not only legendary, but we actually outshine every other destination down on the planet. So there's Tortuga. There's Pride of the Americas. I'm not, I'm not good with looking at what I'm doing here and looking at this. So I should actually have you do this, Amber. Should I sort of tug my ear in when I need you to, um, when I need you to, Change the slide, thank you. This is Amber Van Buren. She's <laughs> she's a, a fair a newbie at the at the CBB. She did an amazing job. She got up early this morning so that she could click the uh, <laughs> clicker for me. Thanks, thank you. So we all know the beach is the main attraction in this destination in Broward County. And while we call ourselves the Greater Fort Lauderdale CBB because there are 31 municipalities in Broward County, and we are a Broward County agency, and we are required to showcase the entire destination. We recognize the main attraction, as you also recognize the main attraction, is Fort Lauderdale Beach. I mean, when I moved here in 1974, um, it was actually December 31st, 1974, New Year's Eve, um, the beach was, at that time, the main attraction here in Broward County. It was a different beach. Uh, I, I, uh, I lived through the heyday of spring break. As I tell people, I puked on that beach more than I can remember. Um, <laughs> I don't remember how many times I threw up on that beach, uh, thanks to the elbow room and the parrot lounge and the nickel beers that, uh, that they used to shove down our 18-year-old throats. So thank you very much. Um, we like to think we fed the fish during those spring break periods, but we have evolved from that spring break destination to a Conrad on the beach, one of only 23 Conrads in the world, soon to be 24 with the NYC, but um, with the Ritz-Carlton, with the Four Seasons coming, we are not the same spring break destination that we were. And when we talk about whether or not we want to continue to embrace spring break or to shy away from our, our history, we believe that because this isn't your mother or grandmother's spring break, we should embrace it. These are kids who are staying at the Conrad and the Ritz-Carlton. Why shouldn't we want them to come here and spend their money? These aren't the same kids that were my spring break where we would shove 10 kids in a hotel room, pay 50 bucks a night, and trash the place. I'm sorry, Ramola, I'm sure one of those places might have been yours. Um, so I apologize now for that, years later. But it's not the same kind of spring break. So how do we go ahead and market and promote this destination? to visitors all around the world. And we are an international destination now. We work, we've organized photo shoots to show all of the new things that there are here on Fort Lauderdale Beach. We capture the beauty and we, and we tell the story um, because we know how important storytelling is these days. We've expanded our annual program to include more of our hospitality partners on the beach for 2019. And this year, for the first time, we removed the fee for Restaurant Month. We used to charge $500, we no longer charge $500, and as a result, we've seen almost double the number of participants for Restaurant Month, totaling 73. Some of the newbies this year are Dune and Auberge, thank you very much. Bose Beach, Wild Time, Oceanside Eatery, Socorro, and Steel Pan, thank you uh, very much, Eduardo. Um, and Auberge Spa is also new for uh, Spa Month, and we, and we um, expanded those months to go through September. It used to only be one month, but we've expanded it because we recognize that August and September are slower here, um, not just September. <clears throat> you know, I could regale you with all of the things that we do. I have tons and tons of pages to tell you all of the ways that we market and promote the beach. 
Um, we do fan trips. We bring people in. We bring influence. And by the way, when did influencer become a real job? I would like that job. Uh, you travel the world on someone else's dime, and you take pretty pictures, and you post them on Instagram. I love that job. But we bring influencers in from all over the world. We've also started work more working with local influencers like Water Babe. I don't know if any of you follow Water Babe. <clears throat> she does a great job marketing and promoting the destination. She lives here. Who knows better how to sell this destination than those of us who've chosen to make our lives here? And we came here like many uh, people. In July of 1974, we took a vacation to Fort Lauderdale Beach, my family and I. We stayed at Point of America's. My father had a friend who had a condo at Point of America's, which was the place to live back in 1974. We spent a week here. My parents loved it so much that six months later, <coughs> In December of 1974, when my father's car would not start for an entire year in Chicago, in December, he threw the keys in the snow on Friday of that week and he said, God damn it, we are moving to Florida. <laughs> and three weeks later, we were here. That's how we got here, just like many of you. And that's what we talk about when we go around the world. Yes, come here for vacation, but when you get here, you will be so surprised at all we have to offer you, separate and apart from the beach the business community, the restaurant community, the retail community, the, the private colleges and, and, and uh, the private schools we have here, the public school system, which could be better, we know, but okay. Um, there are reasons for that. But we've got Brown College here, we've got FAU here, we've got Nova Southeastern here, we've got an amazing secondary university system here. Come here, people are shocked and surprised. And, and, that, and, and while that's great, there's also something that says, what are we doing? that tells the world what we know we have here. What story aren't we telling around the world to say you will be, I don't know that I want people surprised when they come here. I want them to expect great things. Um, yeah, it's great when they come here and they say, wow, I didn't know it, I had such a great time. I'd really like them to say, we know how great everything is here. <clears throat> and that's why we chose to make our lives here. Um, as you know, <clears throat> So uh, we spent a lot of time working with Forbes, Travel, Leisure, and Condé Nast to become one of the top 10 travel destinations around the world this year. We are now, on all three publications, considered one of the top 10 destinations internationally. That should be something of, of which we are all proud. Thank you. I, I, can have, I can have water. So 24 days ago, I started this stupid cleanse. And, um, <laughs> because we're taking a big family trip to Italy next week after next, and I wanted to lose the weight I know I'm gonna gain there. <laughs> and this is day 24, <coughs> and my delicious chocolate shake is sitting on the table and I can't finish it until we're done here this morning, so. Um, many of you know we've broken ground on the convention center expansion. Oh, look, let's go on the floor. Oh, my water. Oh, my water. Oh, my water. You got it. Look. Um, <coughs> this is the fourth time that the county has tried to expand the convention center and build a hotel. We've expanded the convention center once before, but we have broken ground on the expansion uh, of the convention center. And we're building an 800 room headquarter hotel on the hotel here. <coughs> the Broward County Convention Center will offer, when it's completed, 1 million square feet of indoor and outdoor event space, including a 350,000 square foot exhibit hall, five ballrooms ranging from 9,000 feet to 65,000 square feet, and over 60 breakout rooms. And in addition to the hotel, the development is going to be offering restaurants and entertainment, as well as enhanced accessibility to the airport, beach, and downtown. This is all going to make it easier for visitors and convention attendees to experience what we have here to offer in Fort Lauderdale and Broward County and bring the benefits of our thriving tourism industry to more of our local businesses as we bring larger groups, larger conventions, and larger exhibits here to, uh, to Fort Lauderdale. The, uh, the expansion is going to allow us to compete with destinations such as our current competitors, which are Tampa, Charlotte, and Nashville, but it's also gonna give us a chance to chip away at some, of those com at some of those competitors which are able to host larger conventions which we cannot currently host. And we know that this building is gonna boom as soon as it opens. So the, the expansion will be completed in October of 2021. We promised the boat show that it will be ready for them for October of 2021. And the hotel will be open and, and the entire project will be completed in 2024. Um, 
That's a really amazing thing. This is further than we've ever gotten in Broward County on a convention center project. You know, people say the third time is the charm. Well, maybe it's actually the fourth time is the charm because this is the fourth time we've tried this. Um, and um, it's going to be really, it's going, I hate this expression, by the way, but I don't know that I have any other for right now. It's going to be a game changer. This destination will change considerably once this is open. Um, I want to share some uh, positive news for you, if I might, uh, before I turn the mic over. You know what you get when you get a politician or a former politician with a microphone? <laughs> yeah. Um, this, this data is from the Smith Travel uh, Research Group and includes the 17th Street Corridor, downtown Fort Lauderdale, and Fort Lauderdale Beach. So in the first eight months of the year, which is January 1 through August 31, the beach submarket had an occupancy rate just about 80% which is higher than the U.S. occupancy rate of 67.9% and Florida's occupancy rate of 75%. That should be good news for us. Um, the beach hotel, the revenue on the beach hotel's revenue, this isn't, this isn't a TDT, this is um, economic revenue, $329 million. And there was a significant increase in the demand for beach properties for the first five months of the year, which is outpacing the rest of the market here in Broward County. The month of May saw a 5% increase uh, for those hotels that are on the beach. So we're really optimistic about tourism. We're really optimistic about where we're going with tourism. We recognize that uh, 2021 is going to be a difficult year. The convention center closes in February of 20. Uh, we, we, know we have lost some business as a result. We know that that's gonna happen. But because the group business is so long-term, we're already selling 23, 24, and 25, and 26. And um, we're very much looking forward to this. We have a, um, we're undergoing a, a rebranding at the, at the CBB. Today we actually have a short list meeting for the ad agency contract, which expires at the end of this month. And um, we believe that if you don't evolve, you die. And that this destination continues to evolve, and as a result, it continues to grow, and it's a really, really exciting time to be here. Thank you very, 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 very much. All right, so Chris, why are we dealing with so much construction on Fort Lauderdale Beach? <laughs> construction on the beach. Oh, every day I get to deal with construction on the beach. So, um, yeah, let me uh, let me talk a little bit about what's going on out there, how exciting it is, um, and what it's going to be like when it's done. Um, I have told several people that we tried to buy the version that you could build off-site and fly in on a helicopter, uh, but we couldn't afford it, and so we had to build it in place. And uh, since we had to build it in place, there's a little bit of pain that comes uh, with the construction that happens um, on Fort Lauderdale Beach. Uh, you're seeing a lot of what's going on right now coming to an end, hopefully. Uh, there at Los Olas and, and A1A, the parking deck is open. What a great... Uh, venue, the roof of that is. I, I think that we don't talk about that often enough as to how cool and uh, 